Hello again. Uh, welcome to the second part of my three-part series. Uh, today we're going to dive into user flows. This is something that, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this, a lot of different software to do this. I just started a new process in Sketch that I wanted to share. Um, I'm going to have an available file everyone can download as well. I'm going to go through how I look at an application from a high level, look at the different requirements, different steps, states, uh, and everything needs to be considered, not only design, but also engineering to make sure we hit our deadlines and get the app designed correctly. Let's get started. Okay, so before I get into the file here, I want to be completely honest with you all. I honestly don't wireframe a ton. A lot of my wireframing and a lot of my initial information architecture work is done on a whiteboard. Uh, this is true at Netflix and Google as well as Design Inc. I feel like if you're working on a smaller team, everyone is pretty senior. There's a lot of assumed things that I think a wireframe does that uh, you don't need to outline and waste your time on. All that being said, at Design Inc. we're starting uh, a new feature that's um, pretty large and so I wanted to slow down and look at everything that we wanted to um, include in the initial version of this release. And so um, I forced myself to open up Sketch and wireframe things out to so make sure that the requirements, um, the steps, states, and different flows are visualized really for the whole team. Um, this isn't so much an actual building document, rather a document we can all look at in a meeting, talk about, say, hey, what about this? What about that? This looks good. We need to add something else over here. So it's really outlining kind of the overall flow of a product, the different uh, dependencies and requirements that are needed within any given flow. Oh, one other thing. A lot of people do a lot of wireframes in Illustrator. There's also a lot of software out there that um, does this for you as well. Um, if you're doing a lot of technical conditional things, uh, I recommend using one of those softwares because it provides a lot of uh, quick functionality of saying if this, then that, and then go do this. I am not doing that right here, nor do I do that often. Usually a lot of my UX is very high level and very product oriented, less technical. I have used, uh, I think, OmniGraffle for that in the past. I created a new template in uh, Sketch that I've um, really enjoying using. Uh, I've been using a lot of advanced symbols. Um, Matt's, I actually didn't use a lot of advanced symbols um, until I watched Matt Smith's video. I feel like I talk about him in every video. We're gonna do some collaborations in the future, hopefully, so that, that'll be fun. But now I've been using advanced symbols a lot in my UX work and my, in my visual design work. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to use, make a template using advanced symbols uh, for efficiency and speed for doing wireframes. So let's jump in. This is a pretty basic file. Uh, I have a little title treatment. Uh, so you can name the flow and uh, description of what of what you're laying out. Uh, I have a base layer here that is um, kind of this background and some just some structural visual things. Also, something to note is when I do these when I do wireframes, I like to show kind of the different domains, the different platforms that this flow might touch. Um, so in this scenario, I'm showing, I'm just outlining a simple onboarding flow. I have two sections horizontally, one being the web app um, and one being email. Uh, I find often that this is something that is overlooked with early designers and that um, you're gonna go through something, let's say creating an account, um, but there's a lot of other things that happen in that flow and that's kind of, uh, it's important to think about in the early stages of designing um, specifically applications and, and more complex flows. Uh, this is in no way a complex flow, but I'm using it as an example for this template. Um, so I'm just going to jump in. These are all um, symbols, all of these, I'm calling them steps. So if you go in here and you look at the um, symbols page, I have different templates for different steps. One is kind of just a simple title and a descriptor. One is a title for multiple lines. One is a title description and bullets. Um, and I'll show you kind of how I'm using these. There's also a lot of icons in here that I will show you how I'm using them as well. So in a simple flow, you can imagine there's you know these very specific steps that let's say a user needs to go through to create an account. My my core goal when doing this is to make sure that the steps we're taking and the data we need to collect um, for authentication and creation of an account are the same in my mind as they are in my boss's mind, the CEO or the PM as well as engineering. Um, so less, this is less about like the nuance of visual design or the design itself. It's more agreeing on technical requirements and the steps we're expecting for the app. So in a simple scenario, I have this first stage saying, uh, you know, you're on the homepage and it says user taps get started, right? This is all hypothetical. The problem with a lot of wireframing is there's a lot of little things like lines and, and boxes and type 
And so I wanted to make symbols of these so that they're, it's a lot quicker to go through this process. So I'm just going to duplicate this. Let's say after it gets started, um, let's just call this the sign up dialog. And we'll say user completes form to create account. And then uh, I have these little icons. I didn't want to show full screens or sketches here because I'm less concerned about the actual layout or the actual UI. It was more about technical constraint and the flow and architecture of the app. So I have these little icons that just help um, nod kind of to the UI I'm going to draw, even though I'm not showing it. So I had a home icon for the home part. I have a form in here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. I see app form. So I have a form icon, let's say, they're going to, you know, sign up dialog, and then let's say we're going to show um, a success date. We're going to show a fail state. And then let's just have one of the things that I like about this is this is a quick way to kind of start to flow out the different steps someone's going to take. I'm using these lines to kind of show the directions they can go. Um, so sign up dialog, success date, say user successfully created account, fail state, say account not created, error in form. What I've, what I've done here is I have these lines to communicate kind of the flow. Uh, I have a simple style there, um, but I like to kind of start mapping out kind of the potential places the user can go depending on how successfully or how um, unsuccessfully they move through the flow. So here, this isn't like anything fancy, I'm just using some simple lines to kind of show where things are going. But I also created uh, kind of these little visuals that, that aren't necessary, but I think they're nice um, for showing, you know, these kind of things where, you know, for success day, you know, they did create something correctly. Um, here's a state they get or they didn't. Um, this happens a lot, like not even just forms, but in a lot of parts of apps, whether it's an app fetching data, um, it's a file upload. There's lots of scenarios where things can go right or wrong or be waiting or pending. So I created these kind of um, ambiguous symbols for showing um, statefulness and kind of a, a bifurcation of the UX of it could go here, it could go here, it could go here. Um, when you're dealing with a lot of technical applications, it's nice to use OmniGraffle or one of these UX programs for wireframing because you get into all these conditional um, states. Um, for me, I just wanted to kind of look at this from a high level. Let's say there's like a um, waiting, uh, a pending state. And we'll here say like waiting, we'll say new account waiting for approval. I spelled account wrong here. So here for this pending state, I just put this here so you can see that there's another symbol here uh, for an error state. So as you can see, real quickly, I've just kind of duplicated some things, wrote in some simple notes, and you can start to see the structure of the app come together. This is exactly what I wanted to achieve, is a very quick way to show a variety of experiences with some simple con comments and, and um, language, where you could step back and see the overall um, app at a whole. As a, as a conversation piece, um, my whole goal with this document is not to keep updating it and have it be a source of truth, rather to be a visual to communicate with the team around to make sure we all are, are talking about the same thing. Um, it's very easy to show a whiteboard and everyone has an interpretation of what it actually means. And the reality is everyone has a very different expectation of what that thing means. So this is kind of a way of, of um, translating everyone's expectations into one document. Okay, so just like I did the states for the sign-up dialog, I can do um, kind of a conditional uh, for this email, so you could say from this email, they're going to successfully create an account or not successfully create an account. 
And I'm just gonna do this here. Also, there's like a weird structure and art to all of this. I probably spend too much time doing this. I don't know if I recommend or not recommend spending a lot of time on this. I feel like you can, these can be a complete distraction or be very useful depending on how detailed you're getting, how, how much you're going down a rabbit hole versus you know how valuable and how much um, content you're actually communicating. Um, this seems a little frivolous just because this is an example. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this you know success and negative state. Cool. So let's say here there's a sign up dialog. Uh, after you create an account, you get an account verification email. Um, once you click from that email, you have a success, let's call this verified email. Verified email, not verified. So you can imagine, even this not verified state, this is kind of is a null state. If it's not verified, there's no account. So I'm just gonna just keep the verified email. So you create an account, you get an email to verify your account, you click something in your email and you get this state here. That's probably not a flow, let's just say this is a, a layout, an account page. Oops. So I'm gonna change this icon to an account page. I have like a layout with a little avatar. And let's just say this is a verified account. So user verifies account and resolves to profile page, let's say. Okay, this is all very basic. All very simple stuff, but you can see how with some time um, in a real actual scenario, you can create these very simple documents that allow everyone to speak about the very specific things um, that are needed. One thing that I've done, I'm, I'm going to just do this one last thing, flow step. I have flow step bullets. Uh, so for here, I wanted this because in the scenario of like an onboarding flow, there's certain things we want to collect or there's certain very detailed um, steps or items that need to be agreed on within um, some product decisions. So in this scenario, let's say for the sign-up dialog, we're very specific. We want like first name. We want last name. If I could spell. We want email. We want a phone number. And let's say we need their social security number for whatever this is. This is a very quick way. Also, I don't know, these are like other fields in here. I don't know if there's other ways to hide this stuff, but I just put a space in here so they go away. And I have a lot of scalability with the symbol. If anyone has a better way of doing that, let me know. Uh, but now quickly, I've taken this step and I've added specifically what we're gonna ask in that field. And so now when I share this with my engineer or my PM, I can say, hey, we're gonna have an account creation dialog on the homepage. Once they hit that, this is what we're asking for. Are we on the same page? Uh, this is a quick way of doing that. Once again, I feel like this is very like low level, unvaluable stuff. But if you like it, let me know because I can, I can keep doing these things. So that's it. Once I have this, um, I'll export these. I'll put them um, in Envision or just attach a PDF or send a link um, from Drive or Dropbox. But this becomes a, a very quick way to uh, make sure that you know everything you're expected to do. Once again, this is a quick way to make sure that you have sight of everything that needs to be accounted for in your design as well as it gives you a nice material, visual material, to be able to communicate objectives and requirements to not only engineers, but other PMs and leadership uh, in a very concise and clear way. So thanks again for watching, subscribe, let me know what you guys think, and if there's anything else that you would love me to go into, um, I'm always looking for new ideas for tutorials. Thanks for watching. Also, if you haven't watched the first video of the series, I go into a little bit of the nuances of file structure and naming things. That is the first video of this three video series. So feel free to check that one out as well. Next week, I'm gonna be going into uh, communicating interactions and showing how I not only show a flow like this, but how I show the screens and the different interactions and how you move throughout an application visually through a document. Thanks for watching.